Hello guys, so yes, it has been a long time since I've done any videos, um, I apologise for that, I seem to say that in every single video that I've done for the past two years, um, it just comes down to just being ridiculously busy, but I've found that I'm just kind of, because at the beginning of the year now, I've finished some projects, and before the next one start, I've found a bit of time, so hopefully we can knock out a few videos and do some fun stuff. So today's video, I'm just going to be playing around um, we're going to use a bit of mash, we're going to use a bit of bifrost, um, and yeah, let's just, just for my first video, let's just have a bit of fun, um, and, and just to do something a bit odd. Again, not pushing my to its limits, but just kind of thinking outside the box, so um, yeah, yeah, let's just, uh, let's begin. So I'm just going to create a little cube here, which is just going to be the uh, floor or base of our scene, and I'm just going to scale it out like so, and I'm just going to drop that down. Um, so it's just just below the main grid and then I think what should we do what shall we do uh, let's just get a sphere um, and well let's just animate that around a bit so I'm just gonna should we animate it around or should we put a curve on it Ooh, it's a tricky one let's just create a curve uh, so we're just gonna go curve CV tools CV curve and I'm just gonna make a whole crazy old mess going on here let's just hit return there drag that up um, and I'm just going to grab some points and I believe I must have soft selection on soft selection on I don't mind it on but we could just change the radius to be honest and that might help us a little bit anyway there we go so let's just grab a few points and just start pulling around if my mouse goes a bit funky sometimes it's just because I'm recording um, so uh, what's been going on while you've been away i've got a new machine which is epic this nice new z840 i'm sitting with 24 core 48 thread 128 gig of ram um i've got that from escape technology and uh they're not sponsoring this or anything but amazing amazing place to get your new equipment from if uh if you are looking for some very nice kit um, so I can IPR render really fast. It's only got a 1080 uh, GTX in it. Uh, sorry, a 1080 Ti tie, um, but it's uh, it's pretty nifty, pretty nifty. So let's just grab this. This is looking a bit funky. Let's just smooth it out. So it's going to go into modeling surfaces, uh, go into hit smooth wherever that is. Come on, come on. I'm sure you guys have seen it, and I haven't. Do 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 Oh curve, sorry, curve smooth. Well that weren't what I wanted. Hang on, so curves smooth smooth iteration, just one. that's not what I wanted at all. Alright. Whatever, let's just leave it as it is. It's not even gonna matter, it's just an animation path. So back into the animation menu and I'm going to go, I remember where this is, uh, it's move, I think it's going to be in constraints maybe, um, no I'm in the effects menu, animation menu, constraint, motion path, attached to the motion path, I'm just going to stick a value in here, let's just say 150 and I'm going to hit apply. And close that, let's just change my timeline to 150. And we just rewind. Um, the other thing I'm going to do, actually, while I'm here, is just going to go Windows Animation Editor, Graph Editor, and I'm just going to get rid of the bezier on this curve. Just select the curve, and then we're just going to hit Linear up here. So that is all done. So now when I hit and play, we'll just get a linear time all the way along. That bad boy. Okay, so um, not very exciting, but uh, let's just see if we can make it exciting, shall we? So let's just rewind, and I've got the sphere, and I'm just going to go into the effects menu, and I'm going to say to it, Bifrost Fluids, let's create, mm, aerial liquid, let's create liquid from that object. So first thing that's going to happen is we're going to get this boundary box around it. The first thing I want to do, if we just get the outliner in here, I want to grab this sphere, because this sphere... Um, in the attributes creates an emitter props tab and we want to turn on continuous emission okay um, that way our bifrost is going to be continuously emitting so if I hit play now it's going to go off and do its thing and start throwing juice everywhere and we can kind of slow that down a little while and stop it going as far as that um, so next thing I'm going to do I'm just going to make the floor um, a 
collider so we just selected the bounding box select the floor I'm just gonna go by frost very uh, collider so that will start colliding now let's just let us see it go around the curve a little bit and they should just start hitting the floor and yeah well they haven't gone through the floor so yeah bouncing off so now we're going to go into the bifrost uh, material itself um, and we're going to go into the container um, the liquid properties and I'm just going to mess around with a few things in here so first of all um, I want its uh, viscosity to be quite high so in turning the viscosity up we're going to make uh, this more less like a water liquid and more like uh, a gooey substance so glue gel all that kind of thing so I'm just going to stick in 20 here um, and we should just start seeing like a different look straight away see it's a bit more gloopy uh, but what I want it to do is just to stop kind of if this was end particles we would ask it um, uh, ask it to nicely to uh, follow this path and have less uh, what's the word for it I can't remember what it was called less less um, something don't worry we'll find we'll get there in a minute um, our brains a mess so voxel size transport steps adaptivity voxel size gravity direction um, so first of all I'm going to get rid of gravity because I don't really want it dropping um, and then we've got the emission tab particle distribution vorticity uh, minimum steps, maximum steps, max transport steps, um, transport time scale. So I'm going to lower this down to 0 0.1 and it should start behaving a bit better. There we go. So that's transport, transport time steps and it's not flinging off all over the place because we've sort of scaled the time down um, on its dynamic attributes. Uh, there we go. So it's kind of doing what I wanted to do. Bit uh, not very nice looking, but whatever. What I might do now is with this selected, I'm just going to go into Bifrost Fluids and I'm going to add a motion field. Um, and I'm going to just click on Turbulence, turn off direction, uh, scale effect speed. I'm going to turn that off and just going to turn the magnitude up just to see if we can get a little bit of break up within that Bifrost. Might take a little bit of while for it to kick in because of um, the transport steps. So let's just wang that right up there. Turbulence and noise. Turn the magnitude of the turbulence up. Um, we might have gone way too far, but we'll see. There you go. It's starting to do some funky old stuff there. Um, which is cool or not cool. I don't know. I think it might be a little bit too much. So we'll just bring this down. Let's just bring this down and just see who's playing because we've got this motion field magnitude but we've also got a turbulence magnitude just trying to kind of work out which is uh, controlling this bad boy most of all and that's sort of all right ish we've got like some kind of turbulence breakup going on here um, I might want to up my game a bit on that uh, and I may want to introduce some noise but we're nearly there uh, da, 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 da. I mean, again, for this video, uh, just showing you how to do a few different steps, sort of stuff that's um, worth you playing with. There we go, we're getting a bit of break up there, whatever. Okay, so next step, what are we doing this for and why are we doing it? Okay, um, so obviously, this is uh, a liquid. So if I just go and create, I, I render a V-Ray by the way, so you can do all this with Arnold if that's what you're using. Um, I'm just going to stick in some kind of rectangle light and I'm just going to scale that up in X, Y, and Z. Um, UMV, sorry, and just bring it over here. And I'm also going to just go into my settings and just make sure that I've got V-Ray selected. Um, and I'm just going to hit an IPR. And I'm just going to drag that in and we can see this black, which ain't really what we want. It's not going to help anyone, is it? So um, let's just go into the Bifrost container and we're looking for the Bifrost meshing tab. I'm going to enable that. Now, while I'm enabling that, I'm also going to hide um, the actual uh, Bifrost 
liquid so I'm just going to control H so we're just left with the uh, mesh and if I PR that um, we shouldn't have a black uh, let's just stop that it might not have updated oh yeah we've got a black a black uh, a black seam so let's just go into the liquid again uh, I'm going to flip the normals on it Bifrost liquid, liquid shape, Bifrost meshing, we'll flip face normals, we'll try that. No, that's not worked either. Funny, isn't it? Maybe it's a shader thing, so it might just have an Arnold shader attached to it. So we'll just quickly create a uh, V-Ray MTL. Yep, I'm just going to drag that out of the way a minute. I'm just going to select my Bifrost material and I'm just going to assign the V-Ray MTL to it and then just see if this starts playing ball. Yeah, it's starting to play ball. Okay, um, so at this moment, it doesn't really matter what we do with the colour of this because we're going to be playing around with it in a bit, but I'm just going to add some refraction um, and reflection for an L switched on and we're going to start to get like a glass-like um, interior or, or water-like. But we haven't got any HDRI lighting in there as such yet, so it's just going to be picking up some weird colours. But anyway, as I said, it's not going to be about um, water as such. Right, next move that away so next we're going to go and we're going to create a cube and all will be clear as to why we're creating this cube and this is just some little thing i came up with the other day um uh so i just thought i'd share it really so we're going to go to the mash menu set which is up here on your tabs um if it's not if you can't find it up here just go into the animation set and you'll get your mash up here and you can just like tear it off if you want and just start adding all your mash stuff there but mine's where it's supposed to be so I'm going to get the uh, mash editor up and with that cube select here I'm just going to create a mash network which is going to jump up here and it's going to create a distribute node for me and you can see if I just hit four that all of our little cubes are sitting down here from the mash network and they're offset as they should be so uh, we've got a distance there but it's not going to matter what we do with this because we're going to plug it in a mesh so we're going to go window outliner and I'm just going to look for my Bifrost mesh, which is here. So I'm going to change the uh, uh, the mesh uh, distribution type to mesh. <laughs> um, and I'm going to drag in the Bifrost mesh into input mesh. Okay, and what we'll start to see is all them little squares are just going to jump onto this mesh. Probably not so easy to see at the moment, but later, if we turn it up, you can see they're appearing. Um, best thing to do at this point though, if you want to, of course, is just go to face center and then we're going to hit flood. So now we've completely covered that mesh in cubes. Okay. Now the next thing you want to do, if you want to do it like this, I mean, we can just sort of show that uh, liquid mesh underneath it if we want, or it's going to come down to your own personal style really. But what I'm trying to do with all of this is um, create a mesh network which is connected to a bifrost mesh because the nice thing about that is that if a bifrost a bifrost mesh um, yeah, it's got its liquid properties so it moves in really kind of funky organic ways um, much like liquid <laughs> as such but because it is a mesh and creates a mesh with mesh being amazing as it is you can connect a mesh network to any kind of mesh um, and as such you can connect it to Bifrost and then you just get this really funky kind of look um, and you can just sort of take it from there really so if we rewind and play we'll see that our mesh uh, our mesh network is growing along every face because we've got flood mesh um, selected on the mesh network and it grows with it which is really cool and because it's mesh we can add other properties to it at the same time so uh, let's just go into the mash menu by clicking in the mash editor and we could add a signal node, a random node. Um, what am I going to add? We could add an offset node. Let's just do a little signal node just to see how things change. I'm just going like, to let it chill out a little bit because it's uh, going a bit wild. Um, we'll just do something like that. Something like that. So it should start bumping around like doing something funky as we go. So I'm just going to rewind and play. And you can see they're all jumping up and down to the beat of the mash for the noise uh, signal type. 
so it's, yeah, it's a cool way of doing things. It's probably not going to be the best way of seeing it like this at the moment because we've not um, play blasted it, we've not cached the Bifrost or anything like that. But with such a simple animation, um, I, I wouldn't say that you need to cache this whole Bifrost thing. It's not like heavy or anything. That's kind of the beauty. We haven't had to change the um, voxel size of the Bifrost simulation to make like a really dense mesh because we kind of got enough going on here really. Um, so we're just going to let it sort of float around and do its thing for a bit. Uh, but then we're going to move on to like a second stage. And what we're really trying to create is just some kind of complex, funky thing that maybe you could use in motion graphics. Um, and just kind of show you the power of these two um, uh, elements combined and how they can create something different and uh, if you think about it this can still work with if you're pouring liquid into a glass um, you can use a mash network over the top of that so you're just creating this kind of different funky look and it doesn't have to be cubes um, it could be any shape that you want to use a multi you know multitude of shapes or a multitude of colors and styles um, so I think I'll stop it around here-ish and let's just have a look uh, how this bad boy is looking in the IPR so here we go, it's updating pretty darn quickly. Um, I'm just going to go in and start looking around this monster. And you know, it's a funky look. I'm loving it. Um, obviously, we've got a shader that we can apply to the um, repro mesh, but obviously it's probably better just to apply it to the uh, source cube, which we should have named, but we didn't. And we know it's the source cube because it's hidden. And I'm just going to create another V-Ray MTL um so we just click here and i'm going to click on the cube and with that mtl uh, with that cube selected i'm just going to sign that and with let's get the mtl open and we can just obviously change the colors start to get some different looks just get the reflectivity up so we start sort of pinging bring that glossiness down ever so slightly for an l switched on so you're going to get kind of that real realistic type of um way that light affects the material but sometimes if you want to be a little bit more stylistic I like to turn it off um, and then uh, just play around with it bring that down a bit whatever let's just change the color to some kind of funky color I don't know some let's go some blues what we got there's something something around here I don't know something like that yeah, so now all of a sudden we've got something that looks kind of metallic and fun, whatever. I don't know about fun. Or we could just have some kind of funky colour, really. Um, we can also add, if we wanted to add a uh, ramp to this to make it even more colourful. Um, I don't know why I'm going on about colourful things. It, it really don't matter if it's colourful or not. But, you know, just in the name of uh, fun, let's just add in a ramp. Hello, ramp. Here we go so we've got a ramp there's no real colors in that at the moment but we'll just add some uh just go with like a greenish and then we'll get a oh i don't know a reddish something pink maybe let's go with pink no no actually let's, let's go blue oh you son of a bitch didn't actually select it yeah let's just get bluish kind of thing going on done and in this one maybe we'll spike it with some hardcore yellow and we can just kind of drag this in just to get some uh, proper differentiation <laughs> differentiation <laughs> can't even talk today god damn it bring that in a bit more so maybe I'll just bring this blue in here a bit more and so obviously we've got the V ramp and the U ramp and diagonal ramp and whatever ramp you want. But yeah, that's kind of cool, kind of different. Um, and then depending on, on your graphics card and whatnot, you could um, play around with depth of field. Uh, so I'll just go into overrides, camera, standard, override, uh, depth of field. I'm going to bring that aperture way down. Um, to about here 
and then in the joy v rays that you can just right click just go set focus point and click on an object and then you'll start to get these background uh, objects out of focus or we can click on the out of focus uh, you can bring these into focus by clicking here obviously we can't render it off like this what well, we can but if the camera's moving this we're not gonna have what we want so we can't sort of click all around here when we're rendering so we just have to create a depth of field pass which is no problem at all um so oh, that's kind of it really um as i said it's just gonna be a quick one i haven't done any uh, tutorials for a while but as with my tutorials they're really just for i don't know hopefully just for making you think a bit and do things slightly different or whatever i don't know um but um Oh yeah, I seem to have textured the cube itself, haven't I? That's what I've done. I haven't. I could. I could have applied that ramp to the actual um, repro mesh. Um, so let's do that actually instead. Let's just the repro mesh selected. We'll just apply that ramp like so. Uh, but because we've got the cube, because we've got the cube textured, then well, I should have done it that way around in the first place. But whatever. Um, yeah. So it's kind of it, and we can, if we want, introduce back in the um, uh, the Bifrost material. But what I like to do, and this can kind of slow things down a lot, but I still like to do it anyway, is... Um, yeah, hang on, let's just stop playing around with that for a minute. Is to uh, overcomplicate this somewhat more. So we're going to go into uh, MASH. Eh mash 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 up here and we're going to add a trails node uh, so I'll click on the trails and I'm just going to go join the dots let it think about it for a second um, and I love doing things with trails I just I just, just something about it I just I just love it I don't know why um, I think it's just because you get this kind of oh, I don't know it's just something really abstract about it um, and that's all I can say. So if we turn the count up, just give us some more trails going on. Um, and we'll add like some kind of shader to this when it's finished doing its fang. So obviously when you create a trails uh, node in MASH, it creates a trails mesh as well, which is cool. Um, and you've got some uh, kind of endless uh, possibilities with that as well. I'm actually just gonna stick on this glass MTL here, not because I want to see it as glass, because I'm just going to get rid of its glass uh, properties. So I'm just going to bring reflection right down, the refraction off um, the Bifrost mesh. Uh, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to leave that there as well. Um, it's just uh, changed the color of that actually. So let's just go into here and here, and then we're going to go and create another funky color. I don't know. Uh, yeah, something like that. Um, and then we're just going to IPR this so we start to get I'm going to um, lower this um, I'm lower this aperture down to about 100 yeah that's good for me so now we've just got something completely different looking you can see we've got all these trails going on we can just kind of move around and just start to create some sort of a, a base for some kind of funky abstract art whatever i think the colors look fairly disgusting but it's just an idea folks that's all it is and you can create some cool animations like this as well maybe you want to animate your text on in this way or maybe it's some kind of beastie um monster type thing i don't know um let's just stop this um i wouldn't mind increasing the amount of trails that are going on uh, trail scale, curve samples, join the dots, dun, 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 just turn the count right up. Um, and yeah, that's kind of it really. I mean, obviously we can play around with um, other shaders. Um, and I might just quickly do that because my personal favourite at the moment is uh, messing around with subsurface. So we'll just go in here and we'll just create a V-Ray Fast SSS and we will whack that on the Bifrost mesh um, and I'm just going to double click that to get the outline open and because we've got some nice presets there I'm going to go with like skimmed milk and see what occurs here and nothing's going which is uh, pretty shifty 
Uh, let's just get this open. We'll just go into the Bifrost liquid again and have a look what's going down with our Bifrost mesh deal. Oh, we flip the face normals. Maybe we need to flip them back because of the subsurface needs to work out skin direction on the model and all that kind of thing. So I flipped it back and looking like I might have caused a crash, which is uh, going to really piss me off. But, oh, result. Save your scenes, folks. Save your scenes. And there we go. We've got um, some subsurface going on, which um, I just love the look of it. It's just, obviously, it shows, slows your renders down and all that kind of thing. But subsurface is the one. Um, so just for now, I'm just going to uh, show off for a minute. I'm going to switch off the depth field. I'm going to switch this off. And I'm just going to go into my render and I'm just going to hit V-Rate IPR. And just going to show you what full screen um, V-Ray uh, rendering within Maya does. I'm not drunk, honestly. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't touched the bottle this morning. Um, but yeah, what's nice about this is you can have a look around uh, almost in real time at your model, uh, depending on your machine. Uh, so we just grab that light. I kind of like to do dark things. Um, just grab the rectangle and I'm just going to pull the intensity down and I'm going to pull the size down as well because I think I want to start lighting like uh, a small area. Uh, let's just bring that light down here. See I love things like this where you just get like a, a harsh light in one area. I'm just going to make that light invisible. And it just kind of blends off into darkness. Uh, I don't know why I like that. Um, so much but I do it's just a look that I like um, I'm also going to stick a shader on the floor quickly so I'm not happy with this greyness uh, let's just, just create the shader first and we're going to go with a, a V-Ray MTO again it's going to graph that to get in the mess down here it's going to select that right click forward aside the selection and I'm going to make that dark but not too dark, except a bit of light, just a bit, yeah, sweet, yeah, so that's cool, I like it, I don't know why, but I like it, so, um, yeah, hope that helped, <laughs> I don't actually know what I helped with, um, but just showed you something different, a different way of working, and really it's just a, another introduction back to me, stay with me folks, um, I want to grow this channel, um, so, you know, like, please like, please subscribe and tell your mates if you think it's any good, then, you know, it's all good. We can all have a little play around together. I'm going to do some more stuff like this. Um, it's always going to be a bit different with me. I'm not going to sit here and show you how to model a hammer or a car or whatever. It's just not my thing. Um, but we're always going to do something a bit off the wall and dynamics -y based mixed with some of these awesome tools like Mash and Bifrost that are going around in Maya. All right, that is it for me. I'm signing off, um, but I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you're not too jealous of my new machine, because <laughs> let's just look, really. I'm just sitting here looking at a render, and it's um, in the viewport. Anyway, see you, folks. Take care. Goodbye.